Commissioner uh, Harris has an announcement. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, uh, commissioners and uh, city residents. I've been asked to make an announcement prior to our meeting tonight. First of all, we had renovations in here last month when we met, and uh, so we have new lights, we have new monitors without the glare, and we also have new microphones. Been a, the microphones are default to on to the own position. In order for you not to be heard, you have to push the button in order to mute and keep it pushed for it to be mute because once you release the button, the microphone is active again. So if you don't want to be heard, you have to mute the, the thing. Secondly, the only motion in the microphone tower is just at the top. If you, if you move it from the bottom, you will break it and it costs several hundred dollars in order to get it repaired. So be careful. So if you move the mic, make sure it's just the top that you're moving. And also, when you speak into the mic, make sure you lean in because this is being televised. And since they've been in, it's been, how should I say, people at home have not been able to hear. So you have to lean in. And those of you using that mic also lean in to speak in order so that people at home can also hear you. So with that, thank you. Okay, good afternoon. Welcome to the Durham Planning Commission. The members of the Durham Planning Commission have been appointed by the City Council and County Board of Commissioners as an advisory board to the elected officials. You should know that the elected officials have the final say on any issue before us tonight. If you wish to speak on an agenda item tonight, please go to the table to my left and sign up to speak. For those of you who wish to speak, please state your name and your address clearly when you come to the podium. Please speak clearly and into the microphone. Each side, those speaking in favor of an item and those speaking in opposition to an item will have 10 minutes to present for each side. The time will be divided among all persons wishing to speak. Finally, all motions are stated in the affirmative, so if a motion fails or ties, the recommendation is for denial. Thank you. Before we have the roll call, I do have several individuals who have asked for excused absences. So I will need a motion to excuse Commissioner Freeman. I will need a motion to excuse um, Commissioner Kitchen. And I need a motion to uh, excuse Commissioner Van, who will be leaving early. So. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Bryan, second by Commissioner Miller, that the individuals indicated will be excused, um, either receive an excused absence or will be excused at the appropriate time. All in favor of this motion, let it be known by raising your right hand. All opposed? Thank you. Now we're ready for our roll call, please. Commissioner Alturk. Here. Commissioner Johnson. Present. Commissioner Ghosh. Here. Commissioner Bryan. Present. Commissioner Satterfield. Here. Commissioner Harris. Here. Commissioner Busby. Present. Chair Hyman. Present. Commissioner Miller. Here. Commissioner Hornbuckle. Present. Commissioner Van. Present. Commissioner Gibbs. Here. Thank you. May I have an approval for the minutes and consistency statements for the July 11, 2017 meeting? So moved. Second. Uh, motion by Com uh, Commissioner Satterfield, second by Commissioner Miller, that we approve the minutes and consistency statements uh, from the July 11, 2017 meeting. All in favor of this motion, let it be known by raising your right hand. All opposed, thank you. We're at adjustments to the agenda.
Um, we're going to bring some more water pitchers in just a few minutes. So if you would, um, the ones that we've delivered, if you'll pull them back and sit them on the tabletop here, and we'll bring some more cups. And I'm not sure what happened to the food pantry because that was we had plenty of water. Uh, so Grace Smith with the planning department. Um, there are no adjustments to the agenda this evening. However, I would uh, staff would re recommend that if Mr. or Mel uh, Reverend Melvin Whitley should show up, we would adjust the agenda at that point to uh, adopt the resolution in his service. Um, and then staff would like to affirm that all advertisements and notifications have been carried out in accordance with state and local law and they're on file in the planning department. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Madam uh, Chair. Yes, Commissioner Miller. Uh, would it be possible to canvas, canvas the audience to determine whether or not there's anyone here to be heard on item 5A? And if there is not, uh, would it be appropriate to move that to be heard after item 7B? Yeah, appropriately. Let's canvas to see. Are there any? So is there anyone in the audience that is here to be heard on the comprehensive plan amendments? Yes. Okay. So we will leave it, leave it where it is. Our first, we're ready for our first public hearing. Uh, comprehensive plan, future land use map amendments. Um, public, uh, it's 2016 evaluation and assessment report of the Durham comprehensive plan. Item number A1700002, staff please. Good evening. I'm a little uh, disconcerted by the new format. Uh, I noticed that the um, slide show. Oh, there we are. Now we're ready. I'm Laura Woods of the Durham Planning Department, and this is the annual evaluation and assessment report. Um, just a reminder: the purpose of the AAR is to recognize, rectify differences between city and county future land use maps. I feel like an eater that microphone. Uh, report on progress of plan implementation, proposed changes to policy language, provide technical updates to the future land use map, and forecast planning trends and issues. Could you please speak directly into the mic? It's yes, um, I feel like it's, it's, I'm getting feedback, so I was I, I'm not sure how loud I sound. I think we're all going to be adjusting to this, so we'll be moving around as we do this. Well, Thank we'll you. do the best we can. Thank you. Okay, um, let's start with the staff recommendation because as you probably noted, there's an error in your staff report. The staff recommendation should read, staff re recommends approval of the policy text changes identified in attachment two of the report. Uh, that was a late change and unfortunately, because of the number of changes, it was of such size that it was better placed in an attachment. So we apologize for that. We'd also like to add staff recommends amendment of the future land use map as shown in figure five of the report. It is noted in the report, but probably it should be noted in the recommendation on page one as well. And uh, we will address that in due order. Uh, in 2016, 17 plan amendments were approved by the city of Durham and three amendment, plan amendments were approved by Durham County. All of those save two are shown as maps in attachment one. And those two I will discuss um, briefly. The largest impact on net acreage on the future land use map were over 1,900 acres that were transferred to five design districts. And those correspond to the compact neighborhoods shown on the map. Um, one of them, Lee Village Design District. Uh, in that case, the Board of Commissioners and City Council opted to adopt slightly different boundaries. And let us say at this point, they have agreed to disagree for the time being on those boundaries. Therefore, those two cases are not included in attachment one because we are uh, proposing to rectify the differences at this time. And that uh, is represented, um, shown in pink, it's approximately 62 acres is the difference. 
the city have a slightly larger boundary than the county. Okay, in terms of um, transfer of land use designations to the design districts, these are the impacts to other land uses on the map. As you see, the largest change was 823 acres taken from commercial designations and um, approximately 800 from a combination of medium density residential and medium high density residential. Now, in this case, that doesn't mean that there's less land available for these land uses or for office. Um, in fact, uh, we would expect that design districts will feature these land uses and probably more intensively than was formally um, allowed uh, in the future, on the future land use map. The reason being design districts are in the vicinity of proposed light rail stations. They'll be transit hubs, and we expect they will be more urban in character than, say, the suburban tier that surrounds uh, some of them. Now, in terms, in terms of other plan amendments that were adopted, here are the effects on net acreage on future land use. The largest impact was low medium density residential um, and that's um, four to eight units an acre, uh, mostly at the expense of land designated for low density, which is two to four units an acre. That may be part of an long, a sort of a, a trend that we can expect um, for the foreseeable future, and I will discuss that again. I'll come back to that at the end of my report. In terms of technical updates to the future land use map, we only proposed one this year. Staff recommends a change for three properties in the vicinity of Broad Street and Stadium Drive. These were acquired by the Ellerbe, Street, Ellerbe Creek Watershed Association, and they have um, filed conservation easements with the um, Register of Deeds they are designated as conservation lands, and therefore the most appropriate future land use would be recreation open space. And as you see, the larger of the three properties is partially within the floodplain of Ellerby Creek in any case. So. In terms of policy status, text amendments, and accomplishments, we uh, contacted all city and county departments that um, have some role in implementing plan policies, and we had a very robust response, I must say. Most, most of the departments responded with recommended changes. Uh, mostly, the recommended text changes are wordsmithing, slight small changes in department names and things of that sort. Um, they also provided us with lists of accomplishments in fulfilling um, policies within the plan. That's in attachment three. <coughs> Proposed changes to language, as I say, are mostly wordsmithing, but there are a few substantive changes. One I wanted to highlight, policy 4.3.3a, Durham Public Schools informed us that the policy grants them a great deal more flexibility in terms of school design than they in fact have. That in fact, they utilize the standards set by the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction and therefore recommended this change to the policy shown here as underlined. Another policy, and this is a recommendation of the Planning Department to incorporate two additional open space plans by reference in policy 7.2.2F, open space master plans. Those two plans are the downtown open space plan adopted in 2014 and the urban open space plan adopted in 2017. And one additional policy, this was a um, recommendation from the Parks Department, City Parks and Rec Department, is that the Durham General Services Department maintain a record of parcels and easements acquired for future parks and future greenway trails. 
I have not followed up yet with the General Services Department. We'll do so prior to um, taking this forward to the elected bodies. As far as I know, they have no objection, and I believe they may be already be doing this. Okay, in terms of planning accomplishments, I will leave it to you to read the accomplishments of all the other departments. Planning accomplishments, I'd like to highlight the aforementioned designation of five design districts associated with planned light rail stations. Complete, a completed East End Connector land use study. Some of that is in the county, some of that is in city, therefore it needs to be rectified in, in this report. And also we updated all local historic district criteria. It had been a number of years since we had done that. We have one suggested format change to the document. This doesn't actually change anything substantive, but at this stage in the life history of the comprehensive plan, many policies have already been fully implemented. Mm -hmm. So as a way of making it easier for appointed and elected officials, staff, the public, to identify policies that are outstanding, things we still have to do, we would preserve that at the head of each chapter. We would list all those. Then we would add new sections and move all policies that have been fully implemented to later in the chapter. And those are shown to you in attachment four. Now getting back, getting back to the housing trends I was talking about, and this really was included as attachment five, simply as an FYI. Uh, this will be part of another report you'll be seeing in the near future that will deal with this subject far more extensively than we can in a document of this sort. Um, I'm showing two maps here. There are three shown in your, in your staff report. Um, 2000 to 2005 illustrates new residential being added. Each of those little squares is one square mile overlaying over Durham County. And it's a trend that was typical of Durham from the late 1970s until the early part of the new century with a lot of suburban, low density residential, sort of in a ring in the suburban tier within Durham County. An interesting reversal of that trend has taken place in the last decade or so with a great deal more housing being added to the urban tier and downtown. Uh, that, of course, is a more intense development than has heretofore been typical of Durham. That is not to say that suburban tier, uh, suburban style, single family residential is suffering in any way. It is still robust. There is robust growth in, in that form of residential development, particularly in southeast Durham in the vicinity of Research Triangle Park mm -hmm. and Raleigh's uh, Briar Creek area. And that concludes my remarks. Do I have individuals who have signed up to speak? Mr. Rogers, you need to release your hand. <laughs> Mr. Rogers is coming forward. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Okay. Um, hi. Um, my name is James Rogers. Um, I go by my middle name, Speed, which is a really long story that you can come ask me about at a different time. Um, I'm just here to speak in favor of the proposed um, comprehensive plan changes. Um, in particular, I would really urge the um, commission to um, adapt the, um, the um, design district um, rezonings. Um, as our population expands and our housing values go up, we're going to need more dense mixed-use development here in Durham. 
And um, I would like to see that reflected in our comprehensive plan. That's it. Thank you. Mr. Rogers, did you state your address for us, please? Oh. I'm sorry. I live at 1007 Drew Street here in Durham, just east of downtown. Thank you so much. I do not have other people who have signed up to speak, so I'm going to close the public hearing and give our commissioners an opportunity to ask questions. Commissioner Ghosh. Thank you, Chair Hyman. I had one question for staff uh, regarding the recommended change to policy 2.1.3D. Um, I was just, if you could explain what the change is meant to accomplish, I didn't quite understand it. Uh, that was 2.1.3D. It's, it's on page one of page the text, text changes. That's right. Attachment two. Residential defined. It's the first item. Uh, residential defined. Um, uh, it simply wasn't spelled out previously that mixed use allows for uh, residential development and um, residential densities of four dwelling units per acre is not untypical of mixed use districts which tend to be within the urban tier. So uh, with this new policy, or with this policy change, uh, mixed-use district would require residential densities greater than four dwelling units per acre? I was under the understanding that you could do a mixed-use district at four dwelling units to the acre. That's correct. I, I, okay, so I guess I don't understand why we're changing, because now you're saying if you, you can't do four, but you can do 4.001. Uh, you have to do at least four in mixed-use district. It's required. It's already required. We're just spelling it out in the um, in the policy. Okay, I think it would be more clear if it stated residential densities are four dwelling units to the acre or more. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Miller. That was my exact same issue, and so uh, Commissioner Ghosh has handled it nicely. Commissioner Bryan. Oh, I will note that the, it's also in 2.3.1G uh, uh, on the next page of this same section, the same change uh, resides there. Yes, Commissioner Bryan. I have a very minor point. Uh, your figure three locations of approved plan amendments. Mm -hmm. uh, I think your locations are all absolutely correct, but you've put the zoning case numbers down, and it'd be more helpful to see the plan amendment case numbers. Very good. Thank you. <coughs> Other questions? Commissioner Miller? So I have a general comment that it doesn't really reflect on the item so much, but does relate to the way we write and work with a comprehensive plan. Uh, and I realize that this is an annual review and kind of an adjustment and reconciliation, and that we have coming before us, I hope in the not too distant future, a, a fairly comprehensive reexamination of our comp plan, a comprehensive plan, comprehensive review. Um, I would love to see the comp plan be uh, be limited to policies that guide the way we make land use decisions and express our goals and that we take out of the comprehensive plan items that to me are more like work plan items or that we at least segregate those things like here are things we need to do in the future into a separate section that's like a work plan uh, because it sometimes when we say that we need to do this, we need to make some rules here, we need to, to, to do this there, we are expressing a broad policy in favor of, it says, okay, we need to, we need to adopt rules that do this. When, when you do that, you're expressing a policy preference. I would rather go ahead and just state the policy preference in the comprehensive plan and then have in a separate section or perhaps even a separate document something that 
lays out what it is we think we need to do in terms of changing rules. Because I've sometimes, as you know, I have sometimes um, uh, had some difficulty reading the plan the same way the staff does and trying to worry out of it the policies that guide at least my own decision making. And that's just a general comment. Uh, and I hope that when we get to this plan, uh, comprehensive plan review in the future, that's one of the things that we can look at. Commissioner, I completely agree with you. Um, you're right, this is kind of maintenance on the existing plan, but we have a larger project to redo and rethink our comprehensive plan and how it functions to shape our community. Um, suggestions like yours and comments like yours are very welcome, even in advance of when we get there. Certainly when we get there, we will be engaging this commission um, as well as a very broad group of stakeholders. So um, we, I completely agree. Thank you for the comment. Thank you. May I have a motion, please, for item A1700002? Madam Chairman, I move that we send uh, A17 quadruple zero two forward to the elected bodies with a favorable recommendation, uh, so long as that recommendation includes the changes recommended by uh, Mr. Ghosh and Mr. Brine here tonight. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that we send item A1700002 forward with a favorable recommendation to include comments by Commissioner Ghosh and, uh, and Commissioner Bryan. Um, all in favor of this motion, let it be known by raising your right hand. All opposed? Motion carries 12 to zero. Thank you. Chair Hyman, before we begin the next public hearing, I, I, there are several items on the agenda that I need to recuse myself. It might be appropriate to do it all at once. All righty. Um, so that would be the item for ample storage. Okay. Smallwood Drive, and the last item, the Wake County Initial Zoning. Okay. Uh, ample storage, Smallwood, and what was the third one? Wake County Initial Zoning, the last uh, public hearing. Oh, I see. Madam Chair, I move that we allow Commissioner Ghost to recuse himself from case uh, in our agenda, case uh, 6A, 7A, and 7B. Second. second. It has been moved and properly second by, it has been moved by Commissioner Miller and second by Commissioner Bryan that Commissioner Ghosh be excused from item 6A, 7A, and 7B. All in favor of this motion, let it be known by raising your right hand. All opposed? Um, we'll move to the next item. Uh, public hearing comprehensive plan future land use map amendments with concurrent zoning map changes. The first item, uh, 6A, ample storage. Two items, A1600014 and Z160030. Staff, please. Thank you, Jacob Wiggins with the Planning Department. Um, so this case is a request for ample storage sand decree. Um, this is a future land use map change as well as a zoning map change. Um, and this is for a 27, roughly a 27 and a half acre parcel located at uh, 4343 Garrett Road. Can we please have the PowerPoint back on the screen, please? Um, the, the subject site is highlighted in red in front of you on the aerial map. Um, as some of you all may know, um, this was a former driving range, um, yeah. now vacant use. Um, the subject site is located a little to the southeast of the intersection of Garrett Road at the Durham Chapel Hill Boulevard, um, also known as 15, US 15501. 
Um, there, there is some self storage to the north of uh, the subject site. Um, and as you get closer to uh, the boulevard, there's a mix of uses, uh, multifamily, commercial, um, as well as some retail uses. Um, the existing conditions at the subject site, um, as you can see, it is bounded by riparian features on both the eastern and western sides, as well as a little bit of the northern side. Um, and the southern portion of the property fronts along Garrett Road. The future land use map, um, as I noted, the site is currently designated as uh, medium density residential, which permits six to 12 dwelling units per acre, and the applicant is requesting to change this de designation to commercial. Um, there's a variety of um, designations in the area, predominantly commercial as you get closer to the Durham Chapel Hill Boulevard, more residential as you go further south uh, down Garrett Road. The zoning context map, Kind of the same thing as with the future land use map, a, a mix of designations, um, primarily um, industrial and commercial along the strip of Garrett Road, more commercial as you um, go along the boulevard, um, with residential designations to the east and north of the site, as well as to the south. The requested CGD district, as I noted, the subject site a little bit over 27 acres. The applicant is proposing a maximum of 200,000 square feet of self-storage. Um, self-storage is a committed use. Um, they're committing to 35% maximum pervious services for the site, one access point along Garrett Road, as well as reserving uh, buffers for the riparian features found at the subject site. Um, the proposed conditions, um, so the Reserved areas for the riparian features and other buffers are highlighted in the pink uh, or purple um, color on the screen in front of you, um, with the surrounding wide area being the uh, building and parking envelope. Comprehensive plan policies are reviewed as part of this request. Um, it does not meet the current future land use map, which is why the applicant is proposing to change that um, to the commercial designation. However, staff does find that the request meets all other applicable policies and ordinances, um, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you all may have at this time regarding this request. Thank you. Uh, may I have the list of individuals who have signed up to speak for this item? I have one individual who has signed up to speak, uh, Patrick Biker. How are you this afternoon? Doing great, thank you. Good evening, Chairwoman Hyman, Vice Chair Busby, members of the commission. My name is Patrick Biker. I'm with Morningstar Law Group here in Durham. I live at 2614 Stewart Drive. I'm here tonight to re represent the applicant for this project, Ample Storage, and we very much appreciate the staff presentation and recommendation you just heard. By way of introduction, Ample Storage has been offering quality storage solutions in Durham and across the Triangle for many years. And I'd be remiss if I did not brag on Ample Storage a little bit since their current facility on Garrett Road has been there for almost 20 years mm -hmm. and it is in pristine, practically brand new condition today. That's a testament to how well Ample Storage operates their facilities. The project before you tonight essentially will be an extension of the existing facility. With the growth our city is experiencing, there has been a steady increase in the demand for self-storage. The existing facility is consistently rented out at about 90% of its capacity, similar to Ample's other locations in Durham. There are plenty of existing neighborhoods near this location, such as Garrett Farms and Hope Valley, with families that will continue to have increasing storage needs. There are many benefits to the proposed development plan before you tonight. Self-storage places hardly any demand on water and sewer capacity and generates no students. Self-storage is one of the least traffic-producing uses there is. You're probably familiar with the extent of traffic in the area. Daily traffic volumes on Garrett Road are approximately 12,000 cars per day, and this segment of Garrett Road, the three-lane section, has a capacity of 16,000 cars per day. Accordingly, this proposal preserves that 4,000 vehicles per day of traffic capacity for future development or redevelopment along Garrett Road, since this project will not result in any appreciable increase in traffic. 
Next, you'll also notice that a significant amount of the acreage is preserved on the development plan. Unlike many development plans, can I just have a little bit more time? <clears throat> yes, please, continue. Thanks. Should only take one more minute. The building and parking envelope indicated is not merely reflective of the UDO setbacks. Instead, a large portion of the acreage in excess of 14 acres is preserved. Generally speaking, the areas closest to the stream which runs through the property will be left undisturbed. And the feature of the D plan further demonstrates why self-storage makes sense at this location. It's doubtful there are any other uses that could be established here and preserve this amount of open space. For example, if you look at the current future land use map designation, that would essentially call for garden apartments, and that would require a great deal of surface parking. Accordingly, the plan before you will benefit by preserving the natural features that exist on this property. Finally, I want to touch on the text commitments that relate to future transit. You will notice that text commitment number two is a proffer to dedicate right of way for the future light rail system. As you know, these light rail plans are not etched in stone, and that made proffering this commitment very difficult. Also, if it is determined by Go Triangle and Go Durham that an additional bus stop is needed along this corridor, Ample has offered to provide that on its property as well. Just right up the road, not even a thousand feet north of this property line, on the same side of Garrett, there is stop 5570, known as the Garrett Road at Ample Storage Stop. Nothing in the UDO nor the comprehensive plan would require Ample to dedicate yet another bus stop in this location, but Ample is willing to work with the, the City of Durham to improve our transit options. For all these reasons, we respectfully ask for your recommendation of approval. I'll be happy to answer any questions, and our team that includes Terry Wethington of Ample Storage and Patty Hillsworth, our site engineer, is here as well. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Viker. I do not have other people who have signed up to speak, so I'm going to close the public hearing and give the commissioners an opportunity to ask questions. Um, do I have commissioners who would like to speak on this issue? Okay, we'll start with Commissioner Al Turk. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, this is a question for staff. Uh, in uh, the staff report, you say that the request from the applicant is not in harmony with policy 2.31D. Can you say more about that? Because I'm trying to find it and I, I didn't see it. The reference isn't in there. Sorry, Commissioner Al Turk. Uh, which page are you referring to? Um, page four, uh, under section G, your staff determination, say that um, the, yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> excuse me, so that policy, yeah, I apologize, that was not more clear in, um, in the staff report, that's referring to the modal, uh, the type of development in terms of commercial, um, strip versus linear versus nodal development, um, in this case, we found that given the environmental constraints on the site, that since it's bounded by the resident or recreation open space, that even though it did not necessarily meet that policy, we felt that that was not something that should be uh, necessarily prohibitive for this site going commercial on the future land use map. Okay, so, so this is related to policy 2.2E, the suburban tier commercial development, which you it should be, yeah, and I apologize for the incorrect reference. Okay. So you're referring to that policy, yes, not 2.31? Yeah, my okay. apologies for that. Okay. Thank you for catching that. Got it. Thank, Thank you. you. Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Chairwoman. So a couple questions, uh, preliminary questions for Mr. Biker and, and, and his team. Um, could you provide um, uh, insight on that? the uh, amount of existing uh, square footage of storage space at the adjacent site? Around 120. All right, thank you. And um, it states that um, the proposed uh, plan is to for a maximum of 200 
200,000 additional right. square feet basically of storage space. And, and, and given that 35% of the project would basically be impervious surface, so that entire 200,000 square foot would go on that in, within that 35% uh, range? At least 65% impervious, right. And do you have any um, preliminary um, uh, design drawings of like what's the height of that, what would it look like? It'd be single story, very, very similar to the existing ample storage facility. It, it's meant to be harmonious with what's already there. Gotcha. Right. Um, so um, I'm typically in favor of it uh, and being familiar with this area and just driving along uh, that particular road. It just, even though it's currently zoned for residential, it just seems that trying to place some residential within that little pocket um, from a con congruency and contiguous standpoint, it, I, I'm more aligned with re being open to thinking of rethinking, you know, that designation. Um, I just, I just don't have enough, you know, insight on regards to more storage. Is there really the demand for 200,000 more square feet of, of storage space uh, here in Durham? We've, we've seen a number of these projects of storage space, and so it's just a question of, is this more speculative, or is there actually a demand that warrants 200,000 additional square foot, up to 200,000 additional square footage of storage space in this, this particular area? And feel free, uh, I'm, I welcome any insight or comments you may have regarding that last point. I'm Terry Weathington with Ample Storage. Uh, to answer your question, yes, there definitely is a need. When he used 90% occupancy as a statistic, we have maintained above 95 for the last five years and have hit 100% several times. So we're, we're being maxed out there. Uh, we definitely need the additional square footage. Follow up, Chairwoman. So, do you have insight into the the actual customer uh, makeup of who's using the current space? Is it residential owners, uh, homeowners in the area, or is these commercial uh, uh, entities that is that's uh, securing this storage space? We we have both. It's a good mix. Um, I don't know exactly what the percentage is because that fluctuates a lot. But because we're a high security storage facility. We have a manager on site. We have gated access only, uh, a lot of cameras that record. We have a lot of commercial tenants too. It's like uh, com commercial tenants that would store overflow goods. Uh, we even have uh, the city. I don't know if they rent at that particular spot, but in a lot of our locations, the fire departments, police departments will rent units from us. Uh, there's no open commerce in the facility. Nobody operates a business, open their door and operate a business, but there are a lot of business tenants, a lot of business tenants that come in, get their stuff, go to work at their different jobs. They store their inventory. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Satterfield. Uh, yes, thank you. I was noticing the uh, letter from the Open Space and Trails Commission requesting that during construction heavy equipment be restricted to the no-build zone of the property, and I was just wanting to ask if uh, the applicant can explain what measures might be taken along those lines. I, I would support that restriction. Patty Hildreth, the engineer for the project. Um, we can note on the plans to avoid uh, any heavy equipment in the no-build zones, and we could also put up protective fences, such as tree protection fence in those areas. Thank you. Is that a question? Yeah. Jacob. Jacob Wiggins with the Planning Department. Um, that, that sounded like a proper commitment. Can we get some more clarification on what the applicant means by new build zone? Um, referring to the new build areas as defined in the Unified Development Ordinance, or are you referring to areas that you're preserving on the site? Areas are preserving. Yeah, the areas we're, we're preserving on the site, we can wordsmith that in the morning, no problem. Uh, Commissioner Miller. Madam Chair, and 
fellow commission members, I'm going to vote in favor of this rezoning and plan amendment. I note from the current comprehensive plan uh, that we have hopscotch uh, zoning along Garrett Road here. We, uh, proceeding south from uh, Chapel Hill Boulevard, we have commercial and then we have industrial and then we have residential and then we have industrial again. And it seems to me that a better organization of our maps, both in the comprehensive plan and in the zoning atlas, would be to uh, have this uh, general, I mean, uh, GC, like the property across the street. I note that the developer has limited this to storage only, uh, as they've said is the perhaps least intensive uh, commercial use that you can have, at least in terms of traffic uh, impacts. They are protecting all the areas that are in the property that are currently designated as uh, recreation and open space in the comprehensive plan. Um, they have proffered even further protections for those areas today. It seems to me this is a great opportunity to uh, make our, our comprehensive plan come better in line with what's actually happening on the ground. Um, and it seems to me it's a much more likely use of the property, much less invasive than the way we have it currently uh, designated in the comprehensive plan or zoned. So I'm in favor of this one. Thank you, Commissioner Miller. Uh, Commissioner Gibbs. Uh, I could probably pass that, but I just want to add to uh, what uh, Commissioner Miller just said. I, he said what I was going to say, but probably much more eloquently, but uh, I do support this. It, this is a good use, uh, and it's, uh, uh, well, I support it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if there are no additional comments, uh, Commissioner uh, Alter. This is a logistical question for staff. Um, I, as I was uh, visiting the site, I, I, don't, I didn't see the, um, the zoning notice on there. Did anybody else? have that issue? Okay, I, I, may, I thought maybe I missed it, but I just wanted to let you know that I didn't see the, the, the Z, the big Z, so. Okay. Um, uh, Commissioner Bryan. I can comment on that. It was laying down on the ground when I was out there. I picked it up and tried to put it back into the ground. Unfortunately, I didn't have a hammer with me, and that ground was very hard. I suspect that it kept getting blown over by the wind. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any additional questions for this item? If not, I think we'll take them uh, separately. Great, Madam Chair, if I may, I'll move that we, uh, we approve or send case number A1600014 forward to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. Second. Uh, motion by Commissioner Busby, a second by Commissioner Bryan that we send the ample storage A1600014 forward to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. All in favor of this motion, let's have a roll call. Yes. Commissioner Alter. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Bryan. Yes. Commissioner Satterfield. Yes. Commissioner Harris. Yes. Commissioner Busby. Yes. Commissioner Hyman? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Hornbuckle? Yes. Commissioner Van? Yes. And Commissioner Gibbs? Yes. Motion passes 11 to 0. And Madam Chair, I'll also move that we send uh, case Z1600030 uh, forward to the City Council with a favorable recommendation and noting the addition of the proffer. Second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Busby and second by Commissioner Alturk oh, that we move item number Z1600030 forward, including the proffer, um, forward to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. All in favor of this motion, roll call. Commissioner Alturk. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Bryan. Yes. Commissioner Satterfield. Yes. Commissioner Harris. Yes. Commissioner Busby? Yes. Commissioner Hyman? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Hornbuckle? Yes. Commissioner Gibbs? 
Yes. And Commissioner Van. Yes. Motion passes 11 to 0. Thank you. Um, um, Madam Chair. Yes. Before you call the next two cases, I want the Commission to know I live within the notification distance for these cases. And under our rules of procedure, I need to recuse myself. Thank you, so Commissioner moved. Bryan. Second. Uh, motion by Commissioner Harris, uh, second by Commissioner Ghosh, that um, Commissioner Bryan um, be excused or recused himself from the, is it the North Carolina 54 self storage? Was there a second one as well? Just the plan amendment and the zoning Okay, analysis. both items. Mm -hmm. All right. All in favor of this motion, let it be known by the usual sign of aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. You're accused. Okay, we're ready for the next item. Um, North Carolina 54 self storage. Two parts, staff, please. Good evening. Good evening, Jamie Sunyak with the Planning Department. I will be uh, presenting case number Z1700001, NC54 Storage with Associated Plan Amendment Case A170001. Can we switch to the PowerPoint, please? The applicant is um, Tim Sivers from Horvath Associates. The jurisdiction is within the city. The applicant is requesting a plan amendment from office to commercial with a zoning change from residential suburban 20 to uh, commercial general with a development plan. The property is 1.9 acres and the applicant is proposing 120,000 square feet of self storage building. This is the aerial map and the property is shown highlighted in red. Um, it is located within the suburban tier, the Cape Fear River Basin, the FJB watershed overlay, and uh, within proximity to the MTC I-40 overlay. The um, property is adjacent to residential, both to the west and to the north. There's a cell tower uh, just to the east and um, and a portion of the Barbie Road retail site, which was recently recommended for commercial development, is located to, to the east. This is a close-up of the property. It's one parcel fronting on NC54, and it is currently vacant, um, basically a hardwood forest. The applicant has submitted ap an application to change the um, office future land use designation to commercial to conform to the proposed zoning map change. Um, the staff has evaluated that change and found it to be consistent with the Durham Comprehensive Plan, and I'll discuss that a little bit further in the presentation. The applicant has submitted an application to change the zoning district from RS20 to CG with a development plan and the staff has reviewed that and found it to be consistent with the um, policies found in the, in the Unified Development Ordinance. Again, the site is 1.9 acres. Um, the applicant has committed to up to 120,000 square feet with a use of self-storage. Um, they are requesting the maximum impervious coverage of a high density at 70% max 
and committed to uh, tree coverage percentage of um, 10%. This is the development plan for the property, which shows the access points. Um, there's dedicated right-of-way along NC-54 and um, also showing project boundary buffers and tree coverage areas. So just to summarize again, in terms of the commitments, they're committing to a particular use, the self-storage use, the building envelopes um, and, and parking envelopes are identified. Um, they are showing the project boundary buffers, tree coverage, one access points, and the uh, development plan also includes a number of transportation-related improvements, um, including a right-of-way dedication and um, additional asphalt for a continuation of the uh, future bike lane, um, bus and pad shelters, uh, and other roadway improvements. They've also included design commitments relative to um, the architectural style of the buildings and other features. We have, um, staff has reviewed the uh, proposal and found that it's consistent with the comprehensive plan in terms of being consistent with the commercial flom. The commercial land use designation is consistent with the commercial defined policy. The commercial land use designation is consistent with the suburban tier land use policy um, with a caveat that it ties into the Barbie Road retail site. Um, the proposed commercial land use designation is consistent with the suburban tier policy and the applicant has proffered a multitude of transportation and circulation related improvements um, to address the increased traffic associated with the applicant and I've already discussed a number of them including the roadway widening right of way for future bike lanes um, and uh, other methods to help mitigate increased traffic. We've also reviewed the application with respect to um, the general commercial policies and um, feel that the zone request would expand the recently recommended sea view zone adjacent to the site. And although, um, and the already established office and institutional zone located directly east and southeast of the property, um, this introduction of uh, commercial general zoning allows the opportunity to provide employment as well as commercial land use, uses and goods and services to serve the surrounding residential neighborhoods. Um, there is existing infrastructure, water and sewer to support the development. Um, the applicant has proffered a number of improvements to help address the traffic. Um, they have provided the appropriate um, project boundary buffers. The use provides a transition from non-residential to residential and the, um, the plan is also uh, consistent with the Durham Long Range Bicycle Plan map um, with the proposed bike lane along NC-54. The staff determines that this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances, and I will be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. I do have two individuals who have signed up to speak, uh, so I'm going to uh, call uh, Tim Stivers and Jamie, is it Swetler? Okay, great, thank you. I'm Jamie Schwedler, and I'll start off tonight and we'll have Tim uh, follow up, if that's all right. That's fine, thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the commission. My name is Jamie Schwedler with Parker Poe at 150 Fayetteville Street in Raleigh. Um, I'm here with Mr. Stivers tonight, who's with Corvath and Associates, to present the, the overall aspect of the plan, and then Mr. Stivers will go into a little bit of the more of the development details. Um, but first, I'd like to thank staff for their presentation and for Jamie for, for doing such an excellent job of covering all the policies. Um, this area should be familiar to you because this is the adjacent parcel to the uh, Barbie Road retail that was approved last month uh, that just kind of touches on the, uh, the eastern edge of that property. And it also borders the Greens of Pine Glen apartment complex to the west and then the small uh, cell tower site 
that largely appears vacant to the east. It's across the street from the assisted living facility, um, but in all respects, it's a much smaller, much more dense um, area than the, the larger Barbie Road retail. Um, and for those reasons, this small parcel is a common sense addition to that commercial area that was just approved to go forward uh, to the council last month. It's a small parcel that's currently uh, zoned in a way that is just not conducive to residential use. There's a lot of residential use that's been uh, used around that area, uh, and it's designated as office on the, the future land use map. We believe the site, because it's so small and narrow, is really not ideal for or office or residential use, and it makes much more sense um, to have this commercial use. And with the text commitment for the 120,000 square feet of self-storage, it won't just be any commercial use, it'll be a sensible addition to that Barbie Road retail. Um, Ms. Onyak spoke about some of the policies that support commercial use in this area. This is a, a one of those node uses, not a commercial strip or, or the like, and so it'll support the residential area that's been built up um, close by in some of those projects that have been approved recently. And so for the reason, those reasons we'd support, the, we, we note that the land use map amendment is supported by several policies that Ms. Sunyak uh, went through, and I won't belabor those points, but I would like to highlight that the change is consistent with discouraging that strip commercial that, that some have feared along um, the NC-54. We're about equidistant from uh, the NC-55 and the South Point area, and just adding that small commercial use to support the residential users in that area complements the node um, and that change from the office to, to commercial. In addition, although we're not providing an office transition between the medium dens density residential and the commercial, we're providing a very low impact commercial, which is essentially the same type of transition between those two uses. Um, it's also supported um, because this, idea, this area is just simply no longer ideal for office as it was, was, was designated. Um, and there's still a shortage of commercial areas and, and needs that are, that are uh, needed by this area. Um, the zoning is supported mainly by the policy 2.3.4 um, C, which provides these commercial transitions between uh, the different nodes and the orderly development and, and patterns of development in this area. We don't have a spot zoning issue here or just a random commercial. It's a sensible commercial that goes along with what you all have already approved to send on. And so with that, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Tim Sivers, who will talk a little bit more about the traffic improvements and the buffers, and be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Good evening. Tim Sivers, Fort Bath Associates, 16 Consultant Place here in Durham, North Carolina. Um, I'd like to uh, speak about the proposed use a little bit, as well as a little bit more details on the development plan. Um, as uh, Commissioner Miller mentioned earlier, self-storage is one of the if not the, is one of the lowest uh, traffic uh, requiring elements for uh, commercial use. Um, this site will have uh, one stored or one single point of access on 54. It's uh, currently designed as a full access. Uh, there are road improvements that are associated with that access point. Uh, in conversations with transportation staff today, there's one clarification that we made, and um, I imagine at the end of my presentation, Bill Judge would probably stand up and, and clarify this as well. But uh, text commitment number seven, um, we will clarify that by putting that text commitment under a specific heading that's titled improvements required by others and may be required of this project. Um, that is an improvement that will be required of the adjacent Barbie retail project. Um, and, and we just wanted to clarify that through an analysis at the time of site plan, that may or may not be a requirement of this development. Um, additional uh, test commit, text commitments on this plan include up to 35 feet of um, 35 feet or more of uh, right-of-way dedication. Uh, project boundary buffers um, are shown in the development plan. Um, they are illustrated um, on site and off site. We're working with the adjacent parcel on um, some easements. So I wanted to clarify one point on that, that if the easements are not able to be acquired by the adjacent parcel, we will provide them fully on our site. Uh, that concludes our presentation. Uh, Jamie and I are available if you guys have any questions, and we ask for your vote. Thank you. Thank you. I do not have other people who have signed up to speak, so I'm going to close the public comment um, section and move to the commissioners and give them an opportunity to ask questions. Do I have commissioners who would like to speak? Okay. Commissioner 
basically finishing it down the bottom. Okay. Yeah. And then my commissioner in here. Hold on. Okay. Uh, commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Chairwoman. So I am compelled to uh, provide comment on this particular um, proposal as I did not vote in favor for the Barbary retail um, um, proposal, the other one, in part because I, I, commercial is just, I, I feel that this area should remain residential, but um, obviously my colleagues, the majority uh, feels that commercial is the way to go in this area here. In regards to the storage, uh, this particular proposal here, um, I just, again, ask the question in regards to uh, the prior uh, case that we just heard. So for Mr. Uh, Schieber or Jamie, I'm sorry, I didn't get your last name, Schieber. Um, and so do, uh, given that this is a, a relatively small parcel of land and, and you're looking to put 120, up to 120,000 square feet feet of storage space on that. Do you have any uh, sense at this point of what that will look like in regards to height, um, um, how that fits on this, on this particular parcel of land? Uh, Tim Sivers. Yes, it, um, the, the general designer now is it will be multi-story um, to, to potentially reduce um, the amount of impervious is the proposed goal but uh, it will be multi-story. Um, this developer has, is currently have a couple sites under construction right now, uh, so it'll follow that same um, building designs that have been committed on the uh, cover sheet. Yeah, I'll follow up on. And so uh, uh, did the uh, applicant, uh, the, the principal over this particular project, was there any co conversations with the uh, applicant or the principal on the, the Barber Retail project in regards to this comporting with that project or did this come subsequently to that? Was there any discussions of how those, these two uh, respective projects actually align or? or? There, there was actually, we, we spent many months um, working with that adjacent owner and looking at different options of ways we could um, work together or uh, possibly make a, 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 a proposal that would go together through the process um, for a variety of reasons and restrictions on their end, it didn't work out. Um, but we've worked with, uh, with the planning department to see what those combinations could look like as the projects develop in the future. Um, and the nice thing about our project is that there's a lot of natural buffers that are already built in because the Greens and Pine Glen has a huge buffer area there. We've got the cell tower uh, site that's relatively a buffer and then that connecting parcel is uh, a difficult out parcel for the adjacent area. So it's a commercial use but it's tucked in very nicely that will minimize any impacts. And will uh, there be a, um, uh, a barrier between this project and the Barbie retail? Uh, will there be any kind of opaqueness? Will you be able to see the, the Barbie retail uh, project or will there, what's the nature of, of how that? So because they've proceeded in, in tandem, but two separate projects, there'll be a project boundary buffer uh, for each project. And I believe that their development plan just has a, a building envelope that um, will have, you know, a significant amount of space between our building envelope. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Busby. Thank you, Madam Chair. I had a, a couple questions. Uh, first, I did want to thank the proponents for the, uh, the large amount of the tax commitments. I, I think there are a lot of commitments here that were appreciated. Uh, I was going to ask Mr. Judge if you could address uh, your take on the tax commitment number seven, which was mentioned earlier, I just want to make sure I, I understand how that's going to be noted here. Uh, Bill Judge, Transportation, the, uh, the comprehensive plan section does uh, require us to track the cumulative impacts of developments in the area, so the additional lane is uh, needed with all of the proposed developments, so what the applicant has to make the modification tonight is if for whatever reason the other developments don't move forward, this project moves forward and they're able at site plan to provide a phasing analysis to show that the, the additional lanes not need it for capacity just for, for this project because it's a relatively low traffic generator that they would have the ability to phase it. So we're, we're conceptually okay with that. We'll work out the exact wording with them and uh, before it gets to city council. 
Great, thank you. You just answered my follow-up question. Well done. Uh, and then my final question, this is for, for the proponents as well. In the stamp analysis, it, there's an advisory note. This is uh, page one of, the, of attachment six. And it says the applicant has not provided commitments that address whether the resulting development will be strip or nodal in configuration. And just wanted to uh, ask about that and, and to give you the opportunity to offer a, a response. And I'm not, ex I wasn't sure where you're referencing in the, um, in the application itself, but but, it, but the orientation will be of a nodal nature. Okay. Um, and if there's anything specific we can answer on that, we'd be happy to. Okay, great. I'll just ask the staff if that, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, great, great. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Miller. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, so when I look at the commitments, um, it says that it'll be Storage, let me wait till I can get staff's attention. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Are you satisfied that the first commitment in the commitments there about the use is a limitation? Or it doesn't say that the use will be limited to storage, it just says the use will be storage. Is that sufficient language for a limitation? Yes, I, I'm satisfied. I, I don't interpret that as any other use, but self-storage. Well, I do too, but sometimes I'm surprised. So, um, and will somebody explain to me again how these buffers work? If I understand the, 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 uh, the plan, um, the development plan, the buffers are actually, the proposed buffers are off-site. Is that correct? That's correct. The, the ordinance does allow for, um, if there are already dedicated buffers on a developed site to, uh, to combine an off-site buffer with an existing, with a proposed buffer on-site. So you would basically um, take the combination of the two. So if the buffer requirement, let's say, was 50 feet, the adjacent property already has provided 30, let's say, the applicant is responsible for providing the remaining 20 feet. So in this instance, the, there are I mean, I went up there, I could not actually discern anything that looked like a planted buffer in there, it just looked like woods. Um, what would be, if this is approved and is built, as the development plan shows, what will I see that will be different there than what is there now, which is woods? I don't believe that you would see anything different on an off-site property. What you would see different is what the applicant, I mean, the applicant can correct me if I'm wrong, but what you would see different is what the applicant is going to be planting on their own site. In other words, so there's an opacity figure in the development plan, but I'm, I, I, I'm, when I go look at woods, I can't tell what the opacity is. I mean, it's, it's high summer and I can see through those woods to a considerable Correct. degree. I'm worried that I want to make sure if this goes through that there are effective buffers. Yes, sir. Uh, Tim Siver, Sorvath Associates. Uh, some of the um, allowances in the ordinance, in the current ordinance, allow you to keep the natural buffer um, as opposed to ripping down existing trees and planting new ones. Um, there are some allowances with that. Um, and when that is accomplished, there are minimums met. Um, the minimum for a natural buffer, I believe, is 25 feet off uh, the top of my head. Um, in this case, we are proposing to keep the natural buffers and work with the adjoining property owners um, to keep the, I believe all the way around, it's 50 feet on the north and the west, and then um, working with the uh, Barbie Road adjacent side of them as well. All right, thank you. Madam Chairman, if I may, a couple of comments, and then I won't, we won't have to come back. Yes. Um, at our meeting last time, when we considered the Barbie Road rear tail, I voted against it because I was against a, the creation of a commercial node at the intersection of Barbie and 54. Uh, the council has not acted on our on our recommendation, which was inconsistent with my vote. And because of that, I still oppose the idea of creating a new commercial node at this intersection. I just don't perceive the need. Um, and so for that reason, uh, primarily, I will be voting against this so that uh, 
my own comments uh, on this will follow and be consistent with the comments I, I sent last time. Uh, had timing been different, uh, uh, I would have taken into account the council's decision on the on the previous case, to whatever that was, and it might have sharpened my uh, feelings one way or the other on this. I will note, though, that we just approved um, a 200,000 square feet of self-storage, one-story buildings on a 14-acre parcel, part of a almost 30-acre parcel. Uh, to, in this case, we are looking at 60% of that same square footage, 120,000 square feet on less than two acres, uh, with almost the entire property uh, developed. Uh, I was concerned when people said, is it going to be strip or nodal? It's going to be total, uh, not nodal. Um, and it's going to be three stories or more tall. Um, and I'm concerned about that. When I did go look at the apartment complex and drove up to the end of the apartment uh, streets there and noted that in as you get closer to 54, this site is actually maybe a little bit lower than the apartments, but that as you get moved back from 54, it gets higher and higher. Uh, and I just don't see how there's going to be any effective buffering between this very intense use of this property and the residential properties next door. Uh, so for those reasons and, and the position that I've already taken with regard to Barbie and 54, I'll vote against this. And I ask my colleagues on the commission also to consider those positions in making their decision. Thank you. Are there other commissioners who would like to speak? Commissioner Al Turk and then Commissioner Ghosh. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm also leaning toward voting against this. I, um, and last month I voted in favor of the Barbie, Barbie retail uh, development, so now I seem like I'm kind of flip-flopping, but I, at least for that case, it seemed to make sense to be on that corner. The, I, I took into account the development plan itself. Um, and I will say, just from a purely aesthetic uh, perspective, when I was on 54, it seemed like, you know, adding another commercial um, lot right here seems incongruent with the rest of the, um, with, at least, you know, to the, Incongruent with the west and south of the plot of the uh, of the of the parcel. Um, so again, I I'm torn about this because I did vote in favor of a commercial uh, uh, rezoning last month, but I am I'm I will most likely vote against this um, for for the reasons I've stated. Thank you, Commissioner Ghosh. Thank you, Chair Hyman. A uh, question for well, I guess anyone could answer it. Whoever can. I'm, trying to understand what the maximum height limitation is for this. Tim Sivers. 35 feet. Oh. I'm sorry. What did you say? 35. No, CG allows up to 50 feet. This is, looks like a good question. We'll figure it out. <laughs> uh, and I, another question for staff um, while that one's being considered. Uh, the the uh, development plan shows one point of access, um, and I'm wondering if that would prevent, uh, you know, a future point of access to the adjacent Barbie Road commercial uh, if, you know, if they're able to get a cross-access easement. Would the development plan need to be amended to provide that, or is that something that could be provided anyway? Bill Judge with transportation, um, that would be a determination the planning director would have to make, but typically uh, an access point, even a cross access point, would be considered a, an additional point of access and would have to be shown on the development plan. So if they were able to come to an agreement, they would, both sites basically would have to come back and rezone to, to show that. Okay, and the, just so the commission is, uh, familiar with why I'm asking that. If I recall, I think there was, you know, some consideration for self-storage on the Barbie Road commercial piece. And, you know, to me it would seem odd if that developed as self-storage, and so did this, but they weren't connected. 
you know, they could be different self-storage entities. I get that, but you know, that's that was my thinking. I just wanted to see how that would uh, how that would have to happen. And Jamie, do you have an answer for us on the height limitation? Uh, yeah, I apologize. It was 50 feet. Okay, and that equates to roughly how many stories? Do you know? Um, it could be four. Okay, thank you. Those are all my questions. Thank you. Do I have other commissioners who would like to um, ask questions on this? If not, I think I'm ready for uh, a motion. Separate items. Madam Chair, I move that we send uh, case number A17, quadruple zero one, forward to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. Second. A motion by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner uh, Busby, that we send item number A17000001 forward to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. May we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Al Turk? No. Commissioner Johnson? No. Commissioner Ghosh? With some commentary. I'm going to vote in favor of this with the hope that if it is self storage and so is the adjacent site, that the applicants will work together and provide the cross access. Commissioner Satterfield? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Busby? No. Chair Hyman? Yes. Commissioner Miller? No. Commissioner Hornbuckle? Yes. Commissioner Van? Yes. Commissioner Gibbs? Yes. I'm sorry. Motion carries seven to four. And the next item, the next part of it. Uh, Madam Chair, I move we send forward case Z170001 forward to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. Second. Motion by Commissioner Busby, second by Commissioner Al Turk, that we send item Z170001 forward with a favorable recommendation to the City Council. Roll call, please. Commissioner Al Turk? No. Commissioner Johnson? No. Commissioner Goch? Yes. Commissioner Satterfield? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Busby? No. Chair Hyman? Yes. Commissioner Miller? No. Commissioner Hornbuckle? Yes. Commissioner Van? Um, <laughs> we'll, count, we'll count that as a yes for Ms. Uh, Commissioner Van Commissioner, and Commissioner Gibbs. Yes. Motion carries seven to four. Thank you. Moving to the next item, public hearing zoning map changes, Smallwood Drive, uh, staff report, please. Thank you, Jacob Wiggins, <clears throat> excuse me, with the planning department. Um, this is a request to rezone one parcel of land. Um, currently in the county's jurisdiction, there is a pending um, annexation petition um, submitted by the McAdams Company. Um, and this is to rezone approximately 24 and a half acres of land located at 208 Smallwood Drive from residential rural plan development residential 6.458. The subject site is highlighted in red in front of you. Um, you can see this area is in the southeastern part of the city um, near the Durham Wake County line, um, just to the west of Page Road. Um, a couple of years ago, there, there was a planned development, residential development to the directly to the west of the subject site. You can see the cleared area. Um, 
near Roach Drive, um, and that is currently under development. Um, and this site is um, slightly south of TW Alexander. Um, existing conditions at the subject site. Um, the site is currently vacant, no use. Um, you can see on this sheet, there are a number of riparian features, wetlands, as well as some steep slopes, uh, primarily located along the northern portion of the subject site. The future land use map, um, this site is designated as low to medium density on the future land use map, which is four to eight dwelling units per acre. Um, the proposed PDR designation fits within this uh, future land use map designation. Um, this designation is found adjacent to the site um, to the west and south. The remainder of the area is primarily designated as industrial. On the um, zoning context map, um, the very similar situation, uh, PDR designation directly to the west of the subject site um, with industrial zoning found to the south of the site um, as well as some RR and OI districts. The applicant's proposal, as I noted, and this is this site is a little bit over 24 acres. They are committing to a maximum of 155 residential units. Um, no specific unit type has been noted on the plans. Um, they are committing to a maximum of 60% impervious surface for the site, as well as dating, um, indicating buffers for riparian features, as well as um, potential street improvements to Smallwood Drive. The proposed conditions, um, uh, this sheet outlines the potential, uh, I'm sorry, not the potential, the actual building and parking envelope, as well as buffers for the riparian features found at the site, and two access points um, along Smallwood Drive, as well as a future uh, potential uh, public street connection along the eastern portion of the subject site. Reviewing comprehensive plan policies in regards to this request, um, staff found that it is consistent with policies indicated in the plan. And in general, it is consistent with uh, other applicable policies and ordinances. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you all may have at this time regarding this request. Okay, I do have individuals. I'm gonna open the public hearing and I do have individuals who have signed up to speak. I'll call in order. Is Wes Carter, Patrick Biker, and Thomas Drake. Good evening again, Chairman Hyman, Vice Chair Busby, members of the Commission. I'm Patrick Biker with Morningstar Law Group uh, at 2614 Stewart Drive. I'm here tonight to represent Catfish Farms, the longtime owner of this property for this agenda item. It's been my privilege to work with these gentlemen for over five years now, since they were involved in the effort to rezone the parcel to the west that is being developed as townhouses. The adjacent parcel shown in your staff report is one that I hoped uh, the Planning Commission has taken a look at uh, to see the townhouse development currently underway. Just to give a little bit more history, uh, a few years ago, as Mr. Wiggins noted, the City Council unanimously approved the townhouse neighborhood that's under construction along the south side of Alexander. The Catfish Farms ownership group has always envisioned that when the adjacent parcel was under development, Catfish Farms would move forward if the market was strong. We are experiencing very, very strong demand for these townhouses that are under construction along Alexander Drive. And so now is the time to move forward with the entitlements for the 24 acres owned by Catfish Farms. This makes sense because just a couple years ago, the developer of the townhouses next door entered into a cost sharing agreement with NCDOT in order to pave Smallwood Drive, which had been a gravel road for decades. The townhouse development we are discussing tonight eventually will have access to both Smallwood Drive and to Roach Drive, and that creates better access both for these new townhouses and for our neighbors, Henderson Grove, Missionary Baptist Church, and All Saints United Methodist Church. Since this proposal follows our comprehensive plan and dovetails well with the existing development, 
we respectfully ask for your recommendation of approval. And now a couple of our friends would like to speak, and they'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening, Chairwoman Hyman and Commissioners. My name is Wesley Carter, and I'm the owner of the property at 2736 Page Road, which is between Page Road and this property. Um, we are for this. Uh, we are intending sometime in the next six months or so to propose a zoning changes for a senior living center, which we think will do well with the residential development and as well as the two churches uh, next to it. So we uh, wholeheartedly approve uh, this proposal. And do you have any questions? Just for the record, could you state your address? Um, 2736 Page Road. Madam Chair and fellow commissioners, my name is Tommy Drake. I am one of the owners of uh, Cat, Catfish Farms property. Uh, we've owned it for over 15 years, and uh, we are grateful for the presentation uh, by staff and for staff support. I'd like to thank you for your service to the community and uh, respectfully uh, ask that you support this request. Available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you. For the record, could you state your address, well, I, your home address? I told myself five times to do that before I got up here. I know. Uh, Thomas Drake, 500 Lake Stone Drive, and that's in Raleigh, North Carolina. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chairman. I do not have any other individuals who have signed up to speak, so I'm going to close the uh, public comment section at this time and give commissioners an opportunity to ask questions. Do I have commissioners who would like to ask questions? I'll start to my right. Commissioners, I see. Okay. Is that it? Okay. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Chairwoman, and um, thank you to the um, applicants for bringing this proposal uh, before us. I'm, uh, I'm inclined to support this. Uh, just the one question I have is, uh, have you decided upon the uh, type of residential units that will be a part of this development, townhouses, single family, detached, or? I, I'm sorry, I didn't mention that. Yes, 100% townhouses. I'm sorry, I should mention that. Thank you. Yes, Commissioner Busby. Great. Thank you, Madam Chair. A, a question as well, uh, Mr. Biker, or, or someone associated with the with the proposal. Just a small question, on the existing conditions map, when you look at that and then you compare it to the proposed site improvement map, it looks like there's a fair amount of the wetlands that are being preserved, but there do seem to be just some small existing wetlands that aren't preserved. So I just wanted to know what the, what the thinking was and the plan was mm -hmm. for that. And you really tested my eyes on this. <laughs> Actually, Stephen Dorn's our uh, site uh, designer with John with the McAdams Company. Good evening, Stephen Dorn with the McAdams uh, Landscape Architect. Uh, I live at 8728 Hume uh, Olive Road in Apex. Um, you are correct; there are some wetlands on site. Um, some of those they are represented; they are jurisdictional wetlands. Um, there could be some impact, uh, and so we are not necessarily known what impact at this point. Um, but there would be some impact just from a grading standpoint be able to navigate around to the portions of the property. And do you have a sense of what you, you might have to do to help mitigate anything that would be happening, anything with, with existing wetlands that might not then be preserved during the development process? There would be, so there is there is mitigation um, that comes with um, uh, a price tag, certainly, um, if we mitigate more than a certain amount, and it just depends on how much we actually end up uh, having to impact. Um, so that's probably how that would be handled. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes, sir. Are there other commissioners who have questions? Commissioner Bryan. Um, my reading of some of the commitments uh, suggests to me that, you know, Smallwood and Roach drives are ultimately going to be connected. Absolutely. And, and, and in fact, some additional construction off of Roach is already started yes sir uh, my question is is will there be 
any sidewalk along Smallwood from this proposed development to the adjacent development that you're connecting? Yes, that is correct. Thank you. Other commissioners would like to speak? If not, I'm going to, what is your pleasure? Madam Chair, I move Z17 quadruple zero seven be sent forward to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. Second. Uh, motion by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Hornbuckle, that we send item number Z17000007 forward to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Alturk? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Bryan? Yes. Commissioner Satterfield? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Busby? Yes. Commissioner Hyman? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Hornbuckle? Yes. And Commissioner Gibbs? Yes. Thank you. Motion, motion passes 10 to 0. Thank you. Um, and let's move to our next item, zoning map changes, uh, public hearing for, and this is SL2 2017-80, and it was Wake County initial. So we've had this one before. You have the zoning case, Z1700. Okay, so the zoning, okay. So it is the zoning case, Z1700025A. Staff? Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jacob Wiggins with the Planning Department. Um, give a quick bit of background um, on this case, um, as well as an update. Um, so, as you may have noticed in the report, um, the North Carolina General um, Assembly um, annexed a number of properties within Durham. Um, these were all considered donut holes. Basically, these were tracts of land that were completely surrounded by the city limits on all sides. Um, the, the idea behind this, um, this was something that the administration, I think, um, was interested in for a number of years. Um, we, as the city, um, and I think on the county side too, there had been confusion at times in regards to emergency service response um, with these kind of isolated pockets. Um, so th this particular case, um, this is for properties that cross uh, the Durham County line into Wake County, still within the city of Durham's um, established annexation area, um, and also surrounded by the city limits on all sides. Um, this affects, um, this particular case affects 10 parcels. Um, the zoning recommendation in the staff report recommended RR. Um, in, since uh, you received this report, uh, some internal discussions with staff, as well as some of the property owners, uh, make us realize that perhaps the RS10 designation would be um, perhaps a more um, reasonable translation or an, I should say initial zoning. Um, the site is currently zoned R4 in the city of Raleigh's jurisdiction. Um, that four designates four dwelling units per acre, um, which is very similar to what our RS10 district uh, permits, which is 10,000 square foot lots, which is basically the same thing as four dwelling units per acre. Um, since these properties are in Wake County and currently have no Durham established um, zoning designation, a recommendation is needed from this board before these, um, before this case can go before the city council for a final determination on the initial zoning. Um, so the um, <coughs> future land use map here is noted with the properties highlighted in red. Um, this is basically an area that's at the end of Andrews Chapel Road um, as it comes into um, Com Comstock. Um, maybe a little hard to see on that map. Uh, th this one will show a little bit easier. You can see where the uh, Durham Wake County line cuts through these parcels. Mm -hmm. um, the area to the north, um, primarily Del Webb, areas to the south and the east, the Briar Creek area, um, Durham and Raleigh. Um, some information about the RS10 district. As I said, the minimum lot size is 10,000 square feet. Um, 
which equates to a maximum density of four dwelling units an acre. The maximum height in this district is 35 feet. And this district, um, in terms of residential units, only permits single family residential structures. No duplexes or townhouses are allowed in this zoning district. Um, and it's some of y'all may recall from last month um, that even though this designation is not necessarily consistent with the comprehensive plan, this one is close. The comprehensive plan recommends this area as low to medium density, which is four to eight dwelling units per acre. So the RS-10 designation does flip the bottom end of that as it allows up to four <laughs> units an acre. Um, so even in light of that, um, staff finds that this request is reasonable, um, which is especially can, um, true given that the Unified Development Ordinance notes that a, an initial zoning is not required to adhere to the future land use map. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you all may have about this particular request at this time. Thank you. I do have uh, one individual who has signed up to speak for with modification, uh, Patrick uh, Biker. Yeah, whatever that means. <laughs> Chair Hyman, members of the Planning Commission, my name is Patrick Biker with Morningstar Law Group. I still live at 26 Stewart Drive here in Durham. <laughs> I'm here tonight to represent Gruha Investments, LLC, which owns just over four acres located in Wake County. That's one of the subject parcels you're considering tonight. It's important to note that this property in Wake County is zoned R4, as Mr. Wiggins just described, which is residential, four houses per acre. I also wish to point out for the Planning Commission that water and sewer infrastructure is readily available for the property owners, such as Gruha Investments, that are before you this evening. I know this from my personal experience with the other developments uh, that have built the water and sewer infrastructure in the immediate vicinity. Given the need for translational zoning and the red ready availability of water and sewer, I'm here to support the staff recommendation for Gruha Investments and the other properties located in, in Wake County that they be designated RS-10. RS-10 is the Durham Zoning District that most closely matches the R4 zoning of these parcels existing in the city of Raleigh's. Uh, zoning lexicon. And so, since the RS-10 would also more, more closely match our future land use map, I think it is appropriate. It's important that translational zoning be applied to these parcels in Wake County since this is an involuntary annexation and it's only fair for property owners to maintain the entitlements they have today. So for all these reasons, we respectfully ask for the Planning Commission to support the staff recommendation and uh, be happy to answer any questions you may have regarding this particular parcel. Thank you very much for your time tonight. I do not have other individuals who have signed up to speak, so I'm going to close the public comments, um, give our commissioners an opportunity to ask questions, and uh, Commissioner Johnson, Commissioner Grimes to my right, Commissioner Miller, no one else? Okay, um, Commissioner Johnson. Woman, and uh, to the applicants, I uh, hope you uh, encourage you to to uh, reach out to your state elected officials and thank them for having us having to consider such a uh, application in the first place. Uh, this probably is more for staff. I'm just curious. Uh, in the uh, report, it says that uh, basically there's a 60-day uh, timeline for the city to apply for the zoning designation before that. What happens if the uh, the city doesn't meet that 60-day deadline. Um, if the city does not meet that deadline, then there would uh, be no zoning at the subject site. It would be an unzoned property. And what would that mean for um, property owners with no zoning designation? Is it the Wild Wild West or? <laughs> we, we don't want to find out what that is. Okay. okay, thank you. <laughs> Uh, the chair recognizes Commissioner Miller. I think that the property owners would have the right to sue for mandamus to compel a zoning category. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Brines. Thank you. Um, I think this, if I'm reading this correctly, this uh, 
follows from the session law of 20180 passed by the General Assembly. And the one thing that I'm conflicted about a little bit, uh, we're talking about 10 parcels in the staff report, but when I look at the session law uh, for section two, well, there are only four properties identified in the session law uh, as being in Wake County. And I'd like to reconcile that difference. Sure, um, <clears throat> Jacob Wiggins um, with the planning department. The, the <clears throat> law or the, the session bill talked about the four specific properties in Wake County. This item has 10 items because there are portions of six other parcels that cross the county line. So the preceding part of that bill contained 417 other parcels, including these other six parcels that were annexed into the city of Durham. Okay, so the listing of what's supposed to be in Durham County is not exactly correct. Is that what I'm hearing? No, what I'm saying, the matter before the Planning Commission tonight is a recommendation for 10 parcels which have portions are wholly within Wake County. The authorizing legislation annexing these parcels encompassed a number of other parcels in Durham County. Those other parcels don't need any action from this board. Okay, I think I see your point. It's just something that bothered me. Yeah, the other parcels are being recommended for an exact translation mm -hmm. uh, zoning, and the Planning Commission, in my memory serves correct, 2009 passed a resolution which automatically recommends approval for any exact translational zoning. So, so that matter will be heard by the City Council on August 21st. Do I have other commissioners who would like to speak? Commissioner Miller. All right, so I'm more confused. So despite what the report says, we're looking at RS-10. Are we looking at RS-10 for the entire shaded area? Yes. Um, it just seems to me that for the Durham Port, well, never mind. That's all I have, Madam Chairman. I'm going to vote in favor. Thank you. Any additional comments from commissioners? If not, um, I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chairman, I move that with regard to case Z170025A, 170 that we uh, recommend to the City of Durham with regard to this initial zoning that the property that is shaded in the staff report be rezoned from its current zoning, whether in Durham or Wake County, to the Durham uh, zoning classification RS-10. Second. Uh, motion by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Al Turk, that we send item number Z170025A forward to the City Council with comments as stated by Mr. Miller. All in favor of this motion, let it be known by a roll call, please. Commissioner Alturk? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Brine? Yes. Commissioner Satterfield? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Busby? Yes. Commissioner Hyman? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Commissioner Hornbuckle? Yes. And Commissioner Gibbs. Yes. Motion passes 10 to 0. Thank you. Our next item, unfinished business. None. Hmm? Oh, there's none. Okay. And under new business, we have a resolution and recognition of Reverend Melvin Whitley's service. I will read this into the record. So sorry, Mr. Reverend Whitley is not here tonight. Resolution and appreciation of Mr. Melvin Whitley. 
whereas Mr. Melvin Whitley was a member of the Durham Planning Commission from February 1, 2010 through June 2017, and whereas the, planning uh, the Durham Planning Commission and the citizens of city and county of Durham have benefited from the dedicated efforts that he displayed while serving as a member of the Durham Planning Commission. And whereas this commission desires to express its appreciation for the public of a job well done, now therefore be it resolved by the Durham Planning Commission Section 1 that this commission does hereby express its sincere appreciation for the service rendered by Mr. Whitley to the citizens of this community and section two, that the clerk of the commission is hereby directed to spread this resolution in its entirety upon the official minutes of this commission and this resolution is hereby presented to Mr. Whitley as a token of the high esteem held for him, adopted this eighth day of August, 2017, Elaine Hyman Chair. Thank you. Madam Chair, move the resolution. Second. It has been moved and properly uh, second that we um, adopt the resolution of appreciation of Mr. Melvin Whitley. All in favor of this motion, let it be known by the usual sign of aye. Aye. All opposed, ayes have it. Thank you. I'm signing it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm.